Hey guys, welcome to another Monday morning update and look who is back, Stephanie, along with Rosella. Hi. How are you guys? Good, doing good, how are good. you? I'm well, we have to ask, how's little Stella doing? And Stephanie, we've talked about her when you weren't here, so we kind of need to know for our audience. She's doing great, currently eating, <laughs> she's hungry. Doing <laughs> <laughs> do. Well, that's what babies do. And that means she's healthy, and that's a very, very good thing. Yes. Good. Well, switching gears to the work mode, guys, we were talking a little, a little earlier about economic data. Just today, Bureau of Economic, so see, Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS is what they're called, releases information, in particular, uh, lots of economic data, but in particular, the job data, which has looked more robust than we kind of thought it should look over the last, um, I would say, few months in particular. And so they released an update, and they do this frequently. This is not abnormal. They'll release the job data, and then a few months later, they will revise the job data because they have more accurate data to go off of because they have more time to take a look at it. Well, they did release an update of the data from March 2023 through March 2024, and they downgraded, downplayed the number of jobs created in that period by 818,000 jobs. That means wow. they overstated the job data by a full third. So one out of three jobs that they said were created over that time period were actually not created over that time period. Lies. What? So <laughs> That's a good question. That is so a good question. It kind of... Problem? Our unemployment rate is way higher than they thought then? That would mean the unemployment is higher than what they thought. That's exactly right. That, mean, that means that the Fed, who goes off of this data when they're setting interest rate forecasts and what they're going to do with short-term rates and all of that, have been using inaccurate data as they go along here. They've been thinking the economy is stronger than what it possibly really is now that they have this data. So it's likely that a couple things will happen. The bond market really hasn't reacted strongly, and that's because it's kind of old data. But rates came down even a little bit more. And as you know, rates have been coming down over the last month in particular. They took a real good drop about two weeks ago, and then they kind of leveled off and went up a little bit. And they're drifting slowly down from there right now. So expectation is that more than likely when the Fed gets together, which is September... I think it's the 11th, someplace in there, mid-September, that more than likely there will be a rate cut from the Fed. Now, keep in mind, they cut what well, they 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 manage what's called the federal funds rate, when they increase or decrease. That's a very short-term rate. That's the rate that banks lend each other money overnight, and the, what the Fed lends to banks overnight. It's it's about the shortest term rate there is, an overnight rate. But it does have a correlation with long-term rates, which is called mortgages, like 30-year fixed. So that's why bonds, 10-year, the 10-year bond you can kind of focus on is very highly correlated with mortgages. And the reason for that is because most mortgages last 10 to 12 years these days. So 10-year bond is a real accurate barometer of what's going on there. And with that, the 10-year bond kind of softened a little bit, which means that yields came down a little bit, which means rates came down a little bit. Does all that make sense? What do you think? No, it doesn't no. make sense. So, <laughs> so aside from the fact that somebody reported numbers by a third and they were off, first off, who's held responsible for that or nobody? Well, that's a very good question. Some statistician sitting behind a desk someplace, I suppose. Okay. Probably some politician if I had to take a guess. Second question. <laughs> So the BLS is actually not politically motivated, according to they're an independent agency um, tasked by the government to report economic data to whatever administration is in there. They're not elected officials. They're hired to do their job. They're basically statisticians. And to be fair, it's a very difficult job they do. They look at they try to get a good reading of economic data, including job reports. And things change, and that's why they update it occasionally. But I got to tell you, this is kind of a big change. I mean, this is like way off target. I think maybe they should have went into the weather business instead, <laughs> to be quite <laughs> so. Barely because that changes as well. <laughs> okay, second they're, question. They're right about half the time, and these guys are right two-thirds of the time, Roselle. So there you go. 
<laughs> uh, how long do they think it'll take for them, like the feds to kind of recover from not having, doing something sooner? Because clearly they should have done something a little sooner than now. And we know that. Uh, that's one thought. Yeah. Um, they're going to make a rate adjustment more than likely at their next meeting, which is September-ish, 11th, I think. I got to look. I don't remember the exact date. And the question is how, how much? The last okay. three times, I believe, when I looked at the economic data, that the Fed started decreasing rates after a period of increasing rates, which is what we've had now, they decreased it by 50 basis points. That's a half a, per, half a per, percent in the short term rate. That's significant. So the question is now whether they're going to do it by a quarter percent, 20, 25 basis points, or a half a percent, which is 50 basis points. And your bet's probably as good as anybody's. I think 50 basis points is kind of what most people are thinking now, given that new economic data in particular. Nice. Hmm. So how much, uh, if it did do half a point, how much roughly will that save buyers, you think, on bringing that rate down overall on their payments and stuff? That's dependent on a lot of things, and it's hard to predict. I would say the market's going to price in that rate adjustment to be probably 25 basis points prior to the adjustment, which means that I think between now and then you're going to see rates come down with the expectation that the Fed's going to lower their rate. And then once the Fed does something, the market's going to adjust one way or the other, too. If they're correct, they'll probably come down even a little bit further. So you know, how much? I don't know, Rosella. Probably if we were to get um, a rate adjustment of an eighth to one quarter percent in rate for long-term rates, that is substantial you know, on a, on a long-term rate basis. And then it depends on your credit and your life size of your loan, how much the payment comes down, of course. And just a quick question, because we keep getting asked this. Oh, obviously- look! I was just so focused on this. I didn't see a little Stella up here there. How cute. (laughs) (laughs) You're so funny. (laughs) She looks like her father. She's a doll. I'm sorry. What is that? (laughs) She looks like her father. I know. Well, I was looking at the camera, not at her. Oh, look at that. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) She's adorable. So what people keep asking, because we keep hearing about rates, you know, potentially dropping. So what do you, what would you say a good average number is right now to answer people? Oh, you well, mean like rates six are at now? Yeah. Is that the question? It depends. Yeah. Um, conventional rates are in the mid sixes right now. Yeah, six and a half. Um, we had six and a quarter the other day for less than one point in fee. That's, a, you know, way better than what they've been. Government oh. rates are in the fives, probably high fives. Okay. FHA and VA in particular. We anticipate then, so if they actually <clears throat> do reduce the Fed rate like you're talking about, then we would see this inch down a little bit further, correct? A little bit further. Yeah, a little bit further. Okay. And how many more times do they meet before the end of the year? I think we have two more meetings with the Fed, maybe okay. three. And that's, in, that's including September's? That includes September's. So if somebody is like, I want to wait until next spring because, you know, that's where a lot of people go. Would or you... the election. Yeah, that too. Um, yeah, I, I'm hearing a lot of that. The slight benefit, I suppose. But really, again, like there's no guarantees, as we know. And last time we anticipated they were going to come down, they still didn't come down. So we're hoping that it really does come down. So if they're sitting in the, you know, mid to high fives to, you know, low sixes or six and a half it still is a good time to make a move if you're looking to move. Yeah, especially because as we've talked about, we're not seeing it exactly yet. I'm seeing most people still kind of sitting on the fence. But when rates come down a little bit more, I expect more people will be buying and there's going to be more offers. And hence, the prices of homes are going to probably be going up. So like we always say, go ahead. I was just going to say, not to mention, we're already getting ready to go into September. So if we're waiting on that Fed drop in September to see the reflection, then you're shopping in October. Um, and then it's wintertime, November, December, and you're at the end of the year and you've waited too long. So <laughs> <laughs> Now you got to move in the snow. <laughs> Maybe you're moving in the snow. Yeah. Nobody wants. No. Okay. Well, so interesting news. Some good news along with some shocking news, but news is news. It was it was a little bit of a surprise when we saw that information. Yeah, that's a yeah. big change. Yeah, that's interesting to me about the jobs 
It's not, it's not um, politically driven. Well, you know, I really don't think it is politically driven. I think it's a big mistake that they went, oops, I wonder how we did that one. It's probably, they're probably going, oh my goodness, how did we do that? We really they missed it. An appointment with an optometrist. <laughs> That's a good joke. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> it's All easy right. for us quarterbacks on the sideline to look at stuff like that because it's hard to look at an economy the size of the United States that is as intricate and combined with international influences and predict or actually even monitor what they're doing accurately what's going on. You know, right. So that's why they do adjustments. But it, that's still a big adjustment. That's kind of way off, you know, no doubt. Don't worry, we forgive them. All right. The Rates best we got. Down. That's good. We'll take that. Yep. Rates are coming down. Absolutely. So if y'all want to buy a house, I would call one of these two ladies here. Stephanie's back in town. And you might be able to meet Stella. Isn't she a cutie? Rosella's always there. Give them a call. They're happy to show you houses. If you have any loan questions, give me a call. If you're listening to this on our YouTube channel, subscribe. Get the little bell thing ringy. Um, pass along to somebody else, do all like those comments, thumbs up. Okay, sorry, that's my YouTube um, commentary. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll take it. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you, guys. Nice to chat with you as always.